All right, so this is going to be a real fast paced ideal gas equation question, and we've got a full marker empirical and molecular formula question thrown in at the end as well. This is going to be more of an advanced video. I'm going to go through it at quite a quick pace. So hopefully you have all the foundation knowledge of ideal gas equations, units, etc. Um, so let's jump straight into this. Now, this is an AQA question, um, but this sort of calculation can be applied to any exam board. So don't let that throw you off. It's still incredibly useful practice. So try your best to follow along, attempt the questions yourself, fill in the blanks where you don't understand. So let's read the question. An experiment was carried out to determine the rel relative molecular mass, or MR, of a volatile hydrocarbon X. So we don't have any clue what this is, um, but it's a liquid at room temperature. A known mass of X was vaporized at a known temperature and pressure, and the volume of the gas produced was measured in a gas syringe. And then we have a, a nice data table here with our mass, temp, pressure, and volume. And we have to calculate the relative molecular mass, so uh, RAM or MR, of X here. We have to show our working, super important, otherwise you're going to lose uh, crucial marks here. And we have to give our answer to the appropriate number of significant figures, AQA. So what's our significant figures going to be? So this is 3, this is 3. This is three and this is two. Now, according to AQA, they like you to use the lowest uh, significant figure in the data that they provided us with, in which case this would be 72. So I'd stick with two significant figures here for this answer. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's what it says in the mark scheme is they only accept the two sig figs. And we're given, as always, our gas constant 8.31. First thing I'm gonna do here and this is, should be this should be essentially the first thing that you do, other than putting down the equation PV equals NRT. This should be memorized, just like easy peasy. This should just be off by heart at this point, right? So standard units for mass in the ideal gas equation is grams. So we have to convert this into grams, and we'll do that in a second. All you have to do is divide by 1000. So uh, I'm just gonna make a note of grams here. That's what we want it in. When we're doing our calculation, we'll convert it and show our working like they wanted. Next thing is temperature. That's already in Kelvin, so that's good to go. Pressure, we want that in pascals, not kilopascals. Cross out that K right there. And volume, now this is unique to ideal gas equation meters cubed so that's all our units sorted now what can we do here now all we have to do is rearrange this expression and look for the variable that we don't have now normally any sort of amount of substance question i always recommend starting with the moles in this case that is correct because we're going to use our moles and feed that into calculating our mr here now let's say for example they were asking for pressure we'd simply rearrange this if we had the moles but in which case we're looking for our moles. So let's rearrange this expression quickly. N equals PV, take the RT to the other side over RT, right? Easy peasy. So all we're gonna do is input our values into the expression. So we have our pressure, 102,000. Remember it's pascals, not kilopascals. And we're going to be timesing that by our volume, which is going to be 72. Now we have to convert this to meters cubed. So we have to divide it by a million. So that's gonna be the same as times 10 to the minus six. I like to use the standard form here. So I'm just gonna do what they've given us, 72, and I'm gonna do times 10 to the minus six right there. So we don't actually have to give an answer. We're just converting it in one go. Next thing, the ideal gas equation, uh, the gas constant, sorry, 8.31. And we'll times that by our temp, which is already in Kelvin, at 373. So then, if you input this in your calculator, you should get an answer of 2.369 times 10 to the minus three, and that's in moles, okay? Okay, so we've got the moles, what do we do next? Now we have to think back to our molar equations, chuck them on the page, N equals M over MR. Now, we're not really going to be using N equals CV here because we have no concentrations available, um, so we're not going to be using that but we will be using this. Remember, just memorize the two molar equations, choose which one you need and rearrange the equation as needed. So what we're going to do, because we want our MR, we're going to rearrange this. So then MR is the subject, our MR of X equals, this is now going to be mass 
over moles. All right, so what I'm going to do now is convert the masses. Remember, we have to show our working. So I'm just going to say that 194 milligrams equals 0.194 grams. We've uh, divided it by a thousand. So therefore, our mass 0.194 divided by our moles 2.369 times 10 to the minus 3. I'm going to throw that in brackets, and that gives us an answer of. 81.89 grams per mole. It's the units of MR. Now you don't really need to put units here, but there's one last thing we have to do. We have to give it to the appropriate number of significant figures, which we worked out to be two. So if we round that, it's going to be 82 grams per mole. I'm going to leave the units off because it's not required here, but it's always useful to know the units. All right then, so that was a nice five marks right there from that, uh, from that ideal gas equation question. Next off, we're going to jump into this empirical and molecular formula question. So an analysis of a different hydrocarbon, Y this time, not X anymore, shows that it contains 83.7% by mass of carbon. Now we know it's a hydrocarbon, therefore the remainder percentage is going to be composed of hydrogen pretty simple. Hopefully you've come across these questions before. And we have to calculate the empirical formula of Y and then use that empirical formula and the relative molecular mass, uh, which has been given to 86, in order to calculate the molecular formula of Y. So empirical formula, as always, is just the lowest ratio possible in the compound. Um, between the, the different atoms and the molecular form is going to be our actual ratio that we have. So if we have this 83.7, then we can say that um, the percentage of hydrogen just simply equals 100 minus the 83.7. And that's going to give us an answer of 16.3%. So that would be our percentage by hydrogen. Now, all we have to do is do the typical um, calculation of empirical formula. So in 100 grams, um, we can always convert this this percentage out of 100% just simply into grams. It makes things a lot easier. Um, so we'd have our carbon equals our 83.7 over our molar mass, which is 12. So mass over MR. And this is going to give us a moles of 6.9. If we do the same thing for our hydrogen, then going to be having our MR of 60, uh, mass, sorry, of 16.3 out of 100 grams, same as the percentage, remember, divided by the MR, which is simply one. That's just going to give us our classic 16.3. Remember with hydrogen, because it's always divided by one, the uh, mass that we're given is always going to be the moles in this case. Okay, so next up, all we have to do is pick the smallest number and divide the rest by that number. So in this case, the smallest number is just 6.975 moles. Um, so we divide both by that. So carbon is just going to be that divided by itself. So that's going to equal 1. And then the hydrogen is going to equal 16.3 divided by 6.975. And that gives us an answer of 2.34. So here, we've got a ratio of 1 to 2.34. But ideally, we want this to be whole numbers. We want them as integers. So we have to think to ourselves, what can we multiply this decimal value to by in order to reach an integer? Now, uh, 0.33 or 0.34 is essentially a third. So if you know that as a decimal, it's easy. You're going to think straight away, okay, times by three. So if we times this overall ratio by three, then that means that we have an ultimate ratio of three to seven. So if our ratio is three to seven for carbon to hydrogen, we can say that therefore our empirical formula, I'm just going to put that as E dot F equals C three H seven. Okay, right, so we've ticked that off. The empirical formula, we know that's C3H7. How do we work out our molecular formula? All you do for this is look at the MR and compare the ratios between them. So our, if our MR is 86, we can write this down. MR of molecular formula equals 86 grams per mole. And we can say MR of our empirical formula equals, now if we add this up quickly, it's going to be 3 times 12, which is 36, plus 7. That's going to give us a value of 43 grams per mole. Now if we compare these two, what is the difference? Exactly, so the molecular formula is 2 times as much as our empirical formula. Therefore, all we have to do is just multiply this 
empirical formula by two in order in order to get our actual ratios within this compound y. So that would just be C six H fourteen. Easy as that. Don't get tripped up on these uh, empirical and molecular formula questions. Once you understand that empirical formula is the simplest ratio and then molecular formula is the actual ratio, using the MR, we can compare the two and get our final answer. So hopefully that was a useful video, combining a bit of amount of substance with ideal gas equation and empirical and molecular formula. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe for future content, and best of luck in your upcoming exams. Peace.